With the trommel rolling, let's put some pay dirt in here. See, it's that easy to make money mining. Welcome back to the Mining Channel. If you're new here, welcome. This is our third and final episode of the Trommel Build. We'll get this thing rolling and get it ready for sluicing this summer. Let's kick it over the snowbank and get at it. It's a lot lighter than it looks. Everyone always bugs me that I wear the Radius coveralls, holes in them, buttons missing, patches. So guess what, I bought some new ones. I do wear these a lot. My friends even joke that I had a pair of coveralls underneath my tux at my wedding. With the trommel beside the shop, we need to tackle these rollers. We need to build four perches for the rollers to sit on. I have the rollers inside. We just need to start machining a few pieces and get them assembled. These are the rollers that we'll be using for the trommel. I have a whack ton of these, so I might as well use them up. We just need to build a shaft going from the bearings to the roller. I drew up a schematic for the shaft we have to make. We'll cut it out of this 4140. With the face flat, we have to switch over to a drill chuck. What this piece allows us to do is hold a small amount of steel here and keep this steady without it wobbling. We'll start off with machining this down to 32 and a half millimeters. Next up is to step this down to 30 millimeters. Okay, let's see if this bearing fits now. Oh, very nice. With the center done and the bearing end done, we can now flip this. With the bearing pad all machined up, let's go assemble this. With all four shafts done, now we need to weld the shaft to the roller. This guy I've already cut out. So we just need to drill some holes and get these bolted to the block. We have all four perches sitting on the cross beam now. We can tack these in. The best way I found to line these up is just eyeball them. And then once you run the machine, you'll be able to see the wear on the barrel and on the roller too. I have tried lasers for this process, but I've never had luck. For one, the barrel is sitting at an angle. And number two, you can't set up that laser perfectly perpendicular to the barrel. With the four perches welded on, I'm also gonna build a few gussets to strengthen these up. These plates will add a lot of strength to this I-beam. I-beam has a tendency to twist a lot, so this will prevent it. On the front side, I didn't box this in. I'll show you later on in the episode. Now that the rollers are all buttoned up, I'm gonna pull this barrel off. The next step we're going to take is cutting out the screen sections. There's three ways you can usually do these screen sections. You can use woven mesh, or you can use punch plate, or you can cut out hundreds of holes into the barrel. I'll be going the cheapest route and I'll be cutting out hundreds of holes with the plasma cutter. This is the template that I use for cutting out the holes with the plasma cutter. I simply lay it on, spray paint over top of it, and then blast each hole out. With the top side all painted out, let's give this guy a roll and do the bottom side. 
Everything's all painted out. We'll start cutting these out in the morning. It's the morning, it's eight o'clock. We have 1,116 holes to cut out. <laughs> so the first thing we'll do is actually go through and pierce each hole so I have somewhere to start with the plasma cutter. So we have our 1,116 holes all pierced. Now all we have to do is take the plasma cutter, run it around the edge of the washer, and we'll have our hole. Number one. Number two. I'm just bugging you. <laughs> Well, there you have it, 1,116 holes cut. Took me eight hours to do that, but it saved me $2,500 in buying punch plate. It's hard to see in the camera, but these holes actually have a taper to them. They taper inward. What that does is prevent a rock from coming in and getting stuck in the punch plate. When I built my first trommel, I did not know that after a small amount of running, the rocks would actually plug up the screen holes. I guess you learn the hard way sometimes. These holes are one inch. This is maximum classification that I would go for catching all around size of gold. I'm very happy that's done. That was a dreadful job. Eight hours, so worth it though. With a good portion of the trommel done, let's do a tally. I put in an additional 14 hours between the screen sections and the bearings. So that puts us at 71 hours. I also put in an additional $350 between consumables and the bearings. So that puts us at $2,350. So let's get on to the next part of this trommel build. I hauled out some half inch plate. We'll cut out a sprocket out of this material. Okay, we got the sprocket cut out. You know, a steady hand and a guy could do anything. I'm kidding. It only involved a million dollar CNC plasma cutter to do this. Let me show you. And that's how a sprocket is cut out. Don't try and attempt that by hand. So we have our end cap in place. This cap was actually cut from the center of the sprocket. We have it all squared up. We can tack this in place now. The sprocket will keep loose for now, so we can do some measurements on top of the barrel. So let's get this thing put back on. All right, she's sitting on the rollers now. I cut off the temporary brackets, so she should be able to roll freely. With the barrel sitting where we want it, we can start mounting the hydraulic motor. Then we can go ahead and align the sprocket and get that welded on also. The reason why I haven't boxed this in yet is because I'm actually gonna mount the hydraulic motor right here. So I need to get a measurement, make up a plate, and we can start fastening the motor to the bracket. This is the hydraulic motor that we'll be using. About 10 years ago, I purchased about 30 of these. I use them on all my trommels and conveyors. It's always nice to have spares around. I've got the hydraulic motor mount bracket all cut out. We'll put it in place, get it tacked up. And then to square it up to the barrel, we'll use a square, put it on the bottom edge. This bottom has to come out just a little bit. We'll tack it in place. Installing this back plate first prevented the I-beam from collapsing after I cut this. I'm gonna put the dry sprocket on now. 
We'll use some magnets to get the sprocket put in place. It takes a lot of finessing to get these things just perfect. Measuring from the end to the sprocket, all the way around, it's sitting perfectly in place. So now what we have to do is shim this sprocket up and down, left and right. I get my sprockets cut a quarter inch larger than the barrel, just in case the barrel is out of round. To do that, I'll take that distance, divide it in half, and I just use two drill bits. I'll install one up top, one on the bottom, one on the left side, and one on the right side. If I were to just cut the chain like that, you only have two to three teeth on the chain at once. So the more teeth you can get, the longer that sprocket will last. Now that we have our length figured out, we can cut this chain down. The slack in this chain will be taken up by a spring-loaded tensioner. Here's the tensioner system I whipped up. This is just a number 80 sprocket, the pivot right there, and then trampoline spring going back to the frame. With the sprocket sitting in place, we can whip up a thrust wheel also. We have the thrust assembly all put together. This wheel here, I have tons of these things. I use them on all my trommels and they seem to last about four or five years. So just continue and just keep on using them on the small one. This is the bracket for this to mount to. We'll get this in place and tack her in. I will be adding a lot of extra gusseting. These do have a tendency to flex and break off. All right, this will be plenty strong enough for this little trommel. What a thrust wheel does is it prevents the barrel from sliding down. When the barrel's on an angle, naturally gravity will want to take it downhill. The drive assembly and thrust system all done. We need to blow the body panels off this so we can access the hydraulic motor area. Now that we have all the body panels blown off, we have a lot of access to this engine area. We now need to mount this hydraulic to the bell housing. The system that I use for adapting a hydraulic pump to a flywheel is I use a double chain and sprocket system. This allows for a small amount of adjustment and these are super strong. You can purchase those small plastic spider gears, but they are only rated for up to four or five horsepower. Now we need to make a plate going from the pump to the bell housing. With the base plate all done and the tabs tacked in, you can use a micrometer to get this perfect distance from the bell housing to the pump plate. The pump is all mounted, we just need to measure up some hydraulic hoses and go get them made up. We now have all the hydraulic lines ran. From the tank, the hydraulic fluid gets gravity fed into the pump. From there, the hose goes up to the pressure side into the adjuster. The CF needs controlled force. This controls the speed of the hydraulic motor. Whatever isn't fed to the hydraulic motor gets pushed back into the tank. When pressured up, the hydraulic fluid goes up to the motor, turns the sprocket, and then the hydraulic fluid just goes simply back to the tank. Two things with hydraulic systems. This tank has to be slightly higher than the pump. These pumps aren't made to draw hydraulic fluid up, so gravity takes it down to the pump. The other thing with hydraulic systems is they can have dirt and grime in them. This tank actually has an in-tank filter system. With the hydraulics all done, the body panels are put back together. To finalize the inside of the barrel, I need to add some flippers to the scrub section. This is where a lot of controversy comes into play amongst miners on how to do this, but honestly, it all depends on the ground that you're in. This works quite well for me. I'll add some half-inch solid stock up in the scrubber section. Going with these small bars, it just creates a slurry of water and gravel until it hits the screen section. I really hate working on these small trommels. They're so tight to be in. Oh crap, I forgot my welding helmet. I seem to always see three different ways of doing this. Some people don't run nothing at all in the scrubber section. Another way is guys add these massive flippers to toss the rocks up and down. I'm not a big fan of that just because it beats the crap out of your barrel. We'll be adding a small amount of flippers in the screen section. These will grab the rocks, lift them up, flip them, and get sprayed from the spray bar. With all the flippers done in the scrub section and on part of the screen section, we need to install some retention ring. This two inch ring will go right before the screen section. That'll prevent any water from rushing down and over the screen. 
This four inch ring will actually install at the very back and that'll hold material in the screen section to get more washed. With the inside of the barrel all complete, there's one last thing I have to do and build a quick spray bar system for the entire trommel. All right, the back spray bar is done. I put a cam lock here so I can rotate this and adjust the spray onto the gravel. Up in the hopper area, we'll install five two inch by two inch nozzles. You'll notice I have no valving on this trommel to get more pressure up top or down below. I had valving on my first trommel and ended up taking them out. They seemed to get clogged up, so I ended up taking them off, never installed them on any of my other ones. And then finally, the last piece of the system, the inlet pipe. So that's it for the water system. I installed this at a slight angle, just so the hose can lay out nicely and take its own curve. I will also be installing one of these on the other side, and whatever side I don't use, I can just cap it. It all depends on what side the pump is on. With all the fabrication done to get this thing rolling, there's only one thing left to do. But first, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Also, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you do so you don't miss another video. Oh, fuck. Night switch. This is my fifth trauma I've built. The first trauma I ever built for myself made me go broke the first year. I've learned massive amounts of information on how to build these things ever since then. Once out at a site, a person can fine tune it. That includes spray bars, roller alignment, and even the size of the screens to catch the gold that you're mining for. A wash plant is just one of many things that can go wrong on a mine site. Money just doesn't fall out into the sluice box. You even see it on TV, brand new wash plants heading out to the field, and they need modifications also. To buy a trommel like this used, you're looking around $30,000. Brand new, around $60. Sure, this is not an MSI or Macon industry trommel, but it'll work just as well. Some people may ask, why can I build this cheaper than big companies? Well, for one, I don't have overhead, I don't have employees, and mainly, I'm not using brand new steel. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get this thing completely done. I want to have this thing painted for this episode, but it's the middle of February, it's still cold out. I still do have to build the sluice box. I have something held up at customs. Who knows how long it'll be. So we just need to do a tally. Getting the sprocket cut out and these smaller ones cost me $800. This hydraulic motor brand new is around 300, so we'll just call it at 300. The thrust assembly with the bearings was 200. I went with a cheaper brand of chain, that was 200. The remainder of what I need for the hydraulic hoses and oil, $350. And then I did have to purchase some new steel. This stupid little piece cost me $75. That's why I don't like buying brand new stuff. I am going to throw in a bunch of miscellaneous items too, such as diesel for the excavator for lifting everything into place. I burned about $100. Sadly enough, that's only 50 liters nowadays, but what do you do? Also, the welder. I burned about another 100 liters. Then there is a lot of miscellaneous items such as zip cuts, welding tips, that kind of stuff. We'll throw in another $200 for that. Then there is also some power from the house. My hydro bill was quite expensive last month from building this trommel. So we'll throw in another $200 on that. Our grand total is 101 hours and we used up $5,020 to build this. Keep in mind that's in Canadian dollars. Also one thing, What's my time worth? Should I add that on? Let me know in the comments section below. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this three-part series. I hope to see you on the next one.